Hello, I'm Tom, and this is our first episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program by Easter Egg Productions. I'm here today with... Alex Frederick. And uh, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on how to get to the moon. I, uh, I believe I found the easiest method to do it. I mean, I know there's a lot of tutorials out there. But, uh, you know, I wanted to make my own and bring my own sort of uh, insight onto the whole Kerbal Space Program experience for everybody. It's got its own sort of elegant simplicity. Yeah, if you haven't played Kerbal Space Program program before. This is the uh, main game screen. Right here we have d two different vehicle assembly buildings. This one over here is for planes and this one over here is for rockets. These are the launch platforms. You can click on them and load a uh, spaceship and this is a tracking station that will t show you a map of all of the spaceships you have in space already. Alright, to get started off, let's go inside the vehicle assembly building right here. And you'll see that uh, we have a rocket already made. Uh, I'm going to do a video showing you how to make it later. But uh, as you see, it's a pretty, it's a pretty decent sized rocket. It's it's okay. I've seen I've seen bigger, and I've made I've made bigger. But this one uh, is just barely enough to get to the moon. Now and that back. they removed the launch tower, you can actually go bigger. And it's true. Back in the old versions, the launch tower would prevent you from having really wide rockets like this. And it's better to have all your fuel down here on the lower stages to help you get through the atmosphere. Not to mention, uh, you can add more solid boosters now if you ever feel like you need a little more wiggle room. That's you know, true. maneuvering in the later stages. Exactly. And uh, we have some RCS on this stage here, which is a special type of little maneuvering thruster. Landing gears, because this is the stage that will land on the moon. And then a re-entry stage. And then a bunch of fuel. Alright, well, uh, let's, let's figure out how we launch this thing. Alright, so this is the uh, launch pad. You see beautiful night sky out for us right there. The galaxy of whatever planet Kerbin is in. Whatever galaxy Kerbin is in. Yeah. And, uh... All right. First, what you're gonna wanna gonna gonna wanna do is uh, orient yourself pointing south, and you can tell which way south is because this uh, dish is on that side of the road. So just orient yourself this way, and then uh, look straight up. And it looks like you got the moon right there, or the moon. And uh, let's just aim up as much as we can, and we're going to time accelerate until it's in the right position to launch, which will be when it just barely sneaks off the side of the screen there. That's uh sneaks off the side of the screen when you're facing south and the center of the nav ball is oriented uh, the same as the very tip of your rocket. Yep. And it uh, looks like our pilot today is going to be Bill Kerman over here looking up with us. Alright, we're almost over the side there. And here we want to slow down the time acceleration. The way you do the time acceleration is with the comma and the period button. Shouldn't it uh, be all the way down since the moon's off screen? I... No. Okay. <laughs> and, all right, so on our display here, we have our time acceleration here and the mission timer, an altimeter, atmosphere indicator, a vertical velocity indicator, which tells us how fast we're going up or down. This shows us all the resources on the ship, various types. We can hide that or make it stay up. This is our pilot. We can press EVA to get him out of the ship, IVA to see in the ship. This is our nav ball, at this point being straight up. And that's all you need to know for right now. And this is our staging menu, which I have set up, and I'll show you how to set that up when I do the tutorial on how to build everything. All right, so we're gonna wanna move our throttle straight up by pressing the shift button, and then turn on our advanced SAS by hitting the T button. That'll keep us pointed in the same direction. And then we're gonna hit uh, space bar to launch our first stage here, which will activate all these engines and break these connectors. And that's our ship going straight up in the sky now. Engines. Yes, many engines. Now you're seeing they're overheating right here, so you're going to hit control to bring the throttle down just a little bit so that they don't explode themselves and go blame you. And uh, just going to, right now you're going to want to continue to thrust straight up, especially our deep in the atmosphere like this. And you see they ran out of fuel and we're just dropping them. That's called asparagus engagement. The next these engines are going to drop. And uh, so we carry extra fuel in there and the engine carry it up with there. It's very efficient way to do things. The engines drop in the same set of fuel tanks initially, so you can uh, start dropping fuel tanks off as they run out without losing much thrust. You can yeah. lose dead weight instead. And, uh, and you leave all of your remaining fuel tanks completely full. Yeah. It's very good. So you're not offering to carry more fuel tanks. So you need to do a stage separation. Yep. Very good. This much power. 
see who drops the final stage. Sure reason to have something about conditioners because they are awesome. These two in, uh, fuel tanks have got a lot of fuel, which should carry us for a while. And we can increase our throttle just a little bit. So we just broke past uh, 10,000 meters, which is the point where the atmosphere density drops enough to where you can increase your thrust all the way. But we still have to worry about our engines overheating for those engines. Right, I'm going to hit M to go into the map view. And you can see us and all the celestial bodies right here. This is the one we're going to go to. Got it. Set us target. Let's thrust uh, straight up. Fuel looks like it's getting a little low. This is our orbital velocity right here. You can switch it and it tells us our service velocity or our velocity relative to the target, which I think it's being confused right now because we're definitely moving in relation. I think it has trouble tracking things that are too far away from you. Clear your target. Yes, yeah, so this is our orbital velocity that's going to keep going up. And it looks like we've passed into space right now, which is a 70,000 meters. This stage is almost about to run out. Once you're a few moments longer. In space, you can go pretty much do a full throttle. That's true, but we still got to worry about these big engines here overheating. sound and the fact that our velocity stopped going up that uh, our engine just ran out of fuel. So we're going to want to throttle down, press X to take your throttle all the way down, turn on your RCS, these are these little rockets up here which are actually little nozzles that uh, help control which way you're pointing, and then you're going to want to just hit shift one little short time to give yourself a tiny little bit of thrust. That'll let us get away from the uh, big fuel tanks once we separate, yep. and so we don't have to worry about them hitting our engines. And then you're just want to, going to want to hit space. Yeah. Want to throttle down your engine and stabilize. A lot of time when you separate something large like that, you'll get a bit of a spin. Yep. And so we just need to use the W, A, S, and D keys to try and get ourselves back pointing straight up right there in the center. We can use our RCS, turn it on with the R button to give ourselves a little bit more push. And then once we are there, we hit the T button and it will help us stop spinning. Grrr. Hypothetically, anyway. The SAS isn't as reliable as we wish it would were. Yeah, it looks like uh, we got a good one here. You can see it, the SAS automatically fires the uh, RCS rockets, jets. It also takes control of any uh, control surfaces like fins you may have and uh, engine gimbling. Alright, looks like we got it good here, so we're going to turn the RCS off. And then continue to thrust straight up. Now we're going to have to switch in the map view right here. We're going to watch our orbit. Because this is a stage that will actually push us out to the moon. To the moon. Millions of meters. Hours of travel time. Terrible. Oh, looks like we're getting close. Alright, so that shows us we're within, a, gets us to about a million meters. Thrust a little more, get down lower and lower. Now at this point, just go ahead and try to get to 100 or 50,000 meters. That uh, yellow exclamation point there, looking for the marker, it signifies a collision warning. It means you're going to enter something sphere of influence, in this case the moons. Yep, and you which can is see. exactly what we want. 
Yes. So right here it tells us we encounter the moon, and then it shows us the path we'll take around the moon, and this shows us we'll exit the moon, and then the purple one is what how the moon will change our path, because it intersected us and has gravity, and that changes our velocity, which changes our orbit, and there's a bunch of math and crap, I don't know. It's not important. What you need to know here is you're, to get to the moon, you just keep thrusting straight up. Yep, it's just that easy. I don't, I don't know why everybody makes a big deal about it. All right, and looks like we've got a good trajectory, getting really close to the moon there. And so we're going to do time accelerate now, which you can do up here. You can click any of these, or you can hit the comma or the period button again. And you don't want to go too fast. And if you're not confident in your skills, you can hit F5 to quick save. And if you crash or your rocket explodes or anything, you hit F9 and you'll load again back where you quick save. Now you can only have one quick save at a time, but it is very useful. Now you don't want to go too fast here, otherwise you might just fly through it. Yeah, time acceleration has ruined more missions than faulty equipment ever did. Mm -hmm. That is very true. <laughs> Ow. Right now you see we just switched into the mun the Mun's sphere of influence here, and if we switch out of here and into our view, we can actually see the Mun right there, staring at us with its lone eye. Well, I think it's got more than one. I yeah, mean, it's, it's not like in an eye-like position. Well, it's just pretty menacing right here, is what I'm saying. A little bit, yeah. I'm not entirely sure that is a moon. There's no way to be sure unless we go there. Look for exhaust ports when you're there. Now what you can see right here, this marker says it uh, has our MUN periapsis. Now periapsis, when you're talking about orbits, is the point where you are the closest to the object. And we don't have an apoapsis for the moon, but we have one for Kerbin. Yeah, we have, an, we have the apoapsis is the furthest point in your orbit, so you don't really have one if you don't have a complete orbit. Yep. So now we are going to use the maneuver node system. We're going to click on our orbit here, right at the periapsis, and hit Add Maneuver. And you'll see this thing will pop up, and it's got a bunch of little things that you click on and drag. And you see right here, I am simulating thrusting away from my velocity, which I'll show you once I get there. And that brings our projected orbit, which is this dotted line, down. And we want to bring that down until we have a nice, tight little orbit. Alright, so this is similar to thrusting straight up, except you're going to want to thrust straight at the blue marker that the uh, planning system puts on your navigation ball here. You can see there it is. You can see it's going. It's pretty close to just thrusting straight up, but it'll, it'll change in time. So just move your nose right here, your pointer on your nav ball. Activate your SAS. Yeah, once you get it on. And don't get worry about getting it too close because the point will shift as you move closer to it. This is it's rocket science, but it's not rocket, you know, science. Yeah. We're rocket surgery, or normal surgery for that matter. Yeah. Close is good enough. Alright. And the way you do this burn here is it tells you, this meter right here, that you're going to need to change your speed by seven, or by 350.7 meters per second, which is how your speed is measured, like right here. Now, it calculates automatically how long it's going to take for you to do that burn, which is your engines at full power. Now, it says it's going to take 31 seconds for that to happen, and since we want it to happen at that exact point, but we can't because our engines take time, you just have that number, and then start when this timer is at half of this. So at 15 seconds from the node, we're going to start burning, and then we'll burn until 15 seconds after the node, and then we should be perfectly fine. And this little meter here will also go down to show us how much, how close we've gotten, and how much delta v, which is change in velocity, we have here. And so we can just fast forward or uh, time accelerate to that point. And remember, we don't want to go too fast, otherwise we might overshoot it. Could totally quick save at this point. Changed our view. That happens when you get close to things. And now it, uh, our default view makes it so that the moon, the moon is down, hmm. which is uh, pretty pretty good for us. I'm gonna get to it about a minute away. Hmm. 
And depending on how far away the maneuver node is, the more accurate you have to be. Because if you're really close to the moon, you want to get as close as we can. Alright, well that's, uh, that's close enough for me. I'm going to cancel this maneuver node by clicking on it. And then since we passed it already, it's got a little X right there. And you can see our orbit has an apoapsis of 60 kilometers and a periapsis of 36 kilometers. Well, I think that's pretty good. So, but I want to land uh, right here, so I'm going to continue thrusting. Thrust back with my SAS still on until my orbit, or active orbit, is just right about down here. You can use that to cancel your momentum. And now we're on a trajectory that's Relative taking your us target. generally straight down, which will make it a little bit easier to land. Now remember when you're coming down, it is pretty pretty bumpy and rocky, so you might not come uh, on a nice flat surface. Thankfully the mud is a pretty welcoming place to land. There's not a lot of uh, difficult terrain here. All right, and uh, landing is one of the more difficult things, so right now you're going to want to hit F5 again, quick save, just in case you blow everything up. And fall down. Now once we get to about 10,000 meters, we're going to cancel all of our velocity to about 150 meters per second, so that we don't go too fast. It's a good thing to remember that uh, that altimeter isn't really totally accurate. Um, I'm not sure exactly how they determine where zero is, but a lot of time um, the ground will be up in the hundreds or sometimes that will be on the low thousands of meters on this planet in this moon. But uh, you'll need to go into the cockpit view to get a really accurate reading on where, around how far you are from the ground. Yeah, let me show you how that works right now. You just hit C to go into the cockpit, and this little thing right here, the radar altimeter tells you things going now because this is our true altitude from the ground yeah but it only starts reading when you're below th when you're within 3,000 meters all right so, so once it starts doing that you're going to want to take take your speed down maybe 100 50. we could land more slowly but it's kind of a waste of beauty seeing as the longer your landing takes the longer the time you're burning fuel to keep yourself at a consistent speed. You can see our shadow. It's very useful for landing. We're pressing G to lower our landing gear right now. Looks like they thrust it up just a little bit too much. The landing gear gives you a bit of impact tolerance uh, when it comes to setting down, but you're still going to want to keep it within about 10 meters per second or so at the very moment of touchdown. Especially when your engines are this long, you can't really afford to uh, have your landing gear flex. Yep, and there we go. A perfect Mun landing.